five jets. I think I'm on. Okay, I am having some super duper awesome technical difficulties today. The first time I did this, man, it just loaded up and did everything right. And now YouTube is like starting to ask me questions. Like, do I want this in portrait? I'm like, no, stop asking any questions. Okay. All right. Hello everyone. My name is Tiffany. I'm the tipsy artist and we are here today to paint a beautiful barn. All right. So I'm coming to you live from our awesome old building in Guthrie, Oklahoma. And it's an absolutely beautiful day here. And uh, we are going to start by, hold on. Hi, Jolene. I know, <laughs> me too. Uh, yes, thank you. I will have a blessed day. It's awesome. I finally got my YouTube to work, so that's pretty exciting. I don't know, I need a teenager here. I need my son here with me to help me out. All right, so again, we're here from Guthrie, Oklahoma, and it's gonna be awesome. And I wanna start by saying that we should all just relax. I'm gonna have to do that now because I've had some, I'm, I'm an artist, I don't do technical stuff, right? So we're gonna start by taking a deep breath in. So here we go, we're going to take a deep breath in. And then exhale. Oh yes, so you must have saw me not feeling very good yesterday. <laughs> So there's a story and we're gonna start painting, but pretty quick. I had my very first official hot flash yesterday and I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> and so I started to just, I don't know. We went ahead and went to the doctor cause I didn't know what it was and it freaked me out. So it turns out I'm get, you know, I'm just having a hot flash. So welcome to hot flashes in this stage, this beautiful stage of my life. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> So, yes, I have some empathetic souls out there with me, so thank you. Uh, so, yes, I do feel a lot better today. I have my water. I'm hydrating. So, you know, keep cool, all that good stuff. All right. So, Barn, let me go ahead and talk about this, what we're doing. All right, we have our templates. All right, so we've got the barn. This is what it's going to look like on your computer. These are available on our website, tipsyartist.com and um, it's on digital downloads that part of our website so anybody can just download these super easy they print right out on your printer and then we do recommend cardstock looks like this all right so this is how it looks you can't do it on regular just normal paper uh, but we do recommend cardstock a lot easier to cut out then what i do is i get an 11 by 14 canvas and all the supplies are in our description below so really easy to find and then love 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 sharpies i have i can't really do these at my live shows that's what's kind of cool i give you a lot of insider tricks and tips for how i really cheat and do stuff at home uh, so sharpies are a beautiful thing they are awesome. And I promise I'll go back and look at that, but I don't have my glasses on yet and I can't see it. So <laughs> what, what's happening here? I've got like hot flashes and reading glasses and ah, there, they'll just keep them on, you know? So I just don't want you to see glariness, but okay. So here is our beautiful canvas. It's already lined out. And let me tell you what I have done here for the line work. So, one of the awesome things you can do when you cheat is I actually like to preserve some of this line work and you definitely want to make sure that when you do it, you know that it will show through the paint. So you want to make sure that you do the right lines with Sharpie and then the right lines with pencil because some of these you don't want to show through the paint. So everything I have here is something that I definitely want to have a hard outline around it. The other thing is, is that I can really come in with a big, thick, solid line around like these little windows and the doors and the roof and all that good stuff. So, um, so like this is gonna make it a lot easier to paint black into those areas because I've already come in with my sharpie and I've done a little bit of a inside cheat work. Also, this is super helpful for people who have shaky hands, makes it a lot easier. Again, all my paintings are definitely designed for beginners. That's my special niche, my area of strength. I don't do anything else just for beginners. That's what I focus on. So, you know, I guess I could do like a series of like, you know, I don't mean any insults, but like Penny for Dummies, you know how they have that whole series, you know, for, so that, you know, that would be for me. So I, I need it too. I, we, we all, you know, that's my, my strength is teaching to beginners. So that's what we do here. Very fun and easy. And it's all about <sighs> relaxation. Yes. Let's take another deep breath. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> All right, so here we go. Let's talk about our tools too. Okay, so beyond the templates that you can get on my website, tipsyartist.com, shameless plug. Uh, then also let's talk about our tools here. So we have a whole family of brushes. All right, we have Big Daddy, and then we have Mama, and then we have two sweet little kiddos here. We have Little Buddy and then Little Bit. All right, that's my little family. That's how I'm gonna refer to them. Then you can have like little paper towels or like a little um, rag is awesome, very absorbent. Then we've got just basic acrylic paint, um, very affordable, easy to use and very fluid, moves smoothly on the canvas. And then I'm gonna have lots of mixing plates. These are just styrofoam plates you get at Walmart or whatever, super easy. Okay, nothing fancy on that. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. Yay, start. Daddy, <laughs> I'm feeling so much better today. So I was just telling everybody that I did kind of have a, a weird moment yesterday and my hands went, both my hands went numb and that's what scared me. And then it started tingling going up my arm. So I did go to the ER yesterday and um, I'm fine. So I have a very healthy heart, everything's good. So turns out just had a, an episode of like too much heat. And then I think it made me kind of freak out cause I was reacting to, I've never felt that before. And then, um, but I'm, but I'm okay. So yeah, they said I have a super healthy heart and they did all my blood work and they're like, you're, you're in excellent health. So I was like, good. So got my water nearby. It's all good. I'm gonna be a lot better today. All right. So thanks for bearing with me and we're going to redo this barn today. It's going to be awesome. All right. So I'm going to start with my big daddy brush and we're going to come into some color here to create our background first. So I'm going to mix all these colors together. So I'm going to pick up a nice big dollop of green. We're going to do about equal parts on this. Then a nice big dollop of white. Then a nice big dollop of blue. All right. I'm going to mix all of these together. And this will give me a really beautiful turquoise color. Beautiful turquoise, quite lovely. And again, that's just about three equal parts. Make it really easy on yourself. That's approximate. You don't have to measure or anything like that. All right, so then I'm gonna go ahead and start to push this into the background here. And then when we are doing background color, I always, like to tell people, I'm kind of being sloppy with technique and everything. I'm just relaxing, taking it easy. I'm focusing more on just relaxing at this point. So you don't have to think about too much. But when you do start to see some transparency, now let's talk about technique. So I am going to make sure that I have lots of paint in my brush. So this is something more to think about for like the second coat, you know, finishing touches here. So make sure you load up that brush with lots of paint. Then make sure you hold that brush more to the side. This will give you a light, gentle hand over the top here. Light, gentle hand. And then let's push some white into that. That kind of looks like clouds kind of streaking through the sky here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just keep pushing that through. And again, if you start to see that transparency or that canvas peeking through, it's because you're just a little too heavy handed, which happens a lot when you hold the brush like a pencil, this gives you a heavier hand. Hold it out to the side, a little bit more awkward, uh, but this does give you a light, gentle touch over the surface here. So I'm just going to continue to push this through. And then as I start to cut in around that barn, then I'm gonna go ahead and turn this brush over to more like a pencil. Now we're going back to that because I need more control. So when you do hold it more like a pencil, it gives you a nice thin line edge right around that shape there. Same thing here on this side. And then over here on this side, we're gonna to continue to cut in around that. I need superhero glasses for this, gotta see. I'm gonna get some water too. I did talk about water. I'm gonna drink a drink of water. Here, let me show you the finished. Isn't that cute? It's gonna be awesome. That's what we're gonna to create today. It's gonna to be neat. All right, so let me gulp some down. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I promise I'm gonna keep drinking water today. <sighs> keep taking deep breaths. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna keep pushing this in into the background. Coming in around that barn. And when it gets to be really tiny in some of these areas here, then I'll need my uh, little buddy brush too, because Big Daddy's just, you know, he can be a little bit too big for these areas. I'm gonna keep using him as much as I can in these larger areas. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this a little bit. There we go. To make sure I stay in the frame here. We're getting a lot of, of our lovely brick wall here. We have this giant wall on this side that is just like that thick. It's really amazing. It's a big stone old rock wall. And this building was built in 1902. So that is really old. <laughs> That's a little history for you, a little trivia. It's called the Osage Building. And we are located directly across from the Pollard Theater. World's, not world, I keep saying world like everybody just thinks Oklahoma is like the whole world. It is to us because we live in Oklahoma, but... Um, it is Oklahoma's oldest and most established theater, so it's quite amazing around these parts. But they're right across the street from us. It's really cool. We always get to see people dancing around in there and doing all kinds of fun theatrical stuff late at night, and we watch it from upstairs because we live upstairs in the loft, so it's really fun. It's a really neat energy here in our city. Our little city. And you should come see us because we have one bed and breakfast that's already open called the Atomic Loft. And then we're about to open another one and it's going to be really unusual, very funky and different. And we're just going to fill it with all of our weird art and all of the antiques here in Guthrie that we have found and have collected, it's going to be super eclectic and very unusual. So it's gonna be awesome. All right, so we have our beautiful background done now. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and wash this brush out. And then let me go ahead and show you, this is my lovely bucket of water, by the way. And when we do wash out a brush, here's how we do it. So you kind of give it some firm pressure, stir round and round and round and round and round, and then watch it till it runs clear. You do want to make sure that all that paint gets out of your brush. It's really important. And then, here's also something super, super, super important. Make sure you dry it off. Yay, okay, so nice dry brush. Here's why this is important to dry off your brush. So what I see a lot with beginners is sometimes they'll just kind of tap, 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 or it's still got all this water dripping out of it. And then they come back in with fresh color, they start to paint again, and then that water hits the canvas and it creates a water run, which does either one of two things. It looks like a mascara run coming down the painting or, um, it will actually erase through paint, which is can be kind of challenging to uh, correct. So prevention is the cure. Just make sure you dry for your brush really well. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and come in and do the barn with white and just a teeny tiny amount of black. So I'm gonna pick up a nice big dollop of white here, and then I'm gonna take my brush and just kind of barely dip into the black Mix that two together. I'm gonna, I just want a really light, light, light gray. Light gray there. Cause I want it to still look white, but just a, a, a hint of that. It, it is old barnwood. So this little bit of black 
with that light gray kind of gives it that old weathered look. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and start to work this in. And this, uh, this line that I have going through here is definitely there with some intention because I am going to make a line that will go across there. And so that's kind of like my little cheat line that I've got going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use Big Daddy as much as I can to paint into this area. And I'm gonna have to switch over pretty quickly to another brush because it's just, he's just a little too big. So we're getting to that stage already. So let's go ahead and switch over to Mama. And I might even have to do like Little Buddy, but I'm gonna try Mama next. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and come into this area here. Having to hold the brush a lot more like a pencil at this point because I'm having to come in and do that cut in work right next to a line. And then, oops. Oh, here's another one of my sayings. There are no mistakes, only possibilities. But I'm gonna come back in and touch this one up. I'm gonna touch up this little possibility right here. But it did, see here's when I say I only have possibilities. So a little, I just used my finger and did some sloppy clean up. That's one of those, what does your mom always say? Don't do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> so that's one of those. Uh, but basically now I have this gorgeous turquoise patina happening on the side of my barn over here and it's just gonna be lovely. So that's my uh, possibility with what just happened there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull some of that in. Again, just light gray over the surface here. And if you really wanna cheat, and you're just like, yeah, I just came here to hang out and drink wine, then you could actually just leave your barn pure white. Your canvas is painted and primed white. So it, it could, I you know, theoretically be just left white. But this is kind of a nice little easy touch. Not hard. Continue to work this in. So when I want better coverage over the surface, again, remember to turn that brush over to the side. And then when you're cutting in, remember to turn it back over more like a pencil, and that will give you more precision and control. Okay. Awesome. That was so easy. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do our black work which is going to be on the rooftop and then through the windows and the barn door so now i need little buddy so here's little buddy this is the small spread that you got and i'm going to go ahead and just use some black paint so here is little buddy i'm going to push back and forth here into the black paint it's all ready to go and then see, this is where those little cheat lines really come in handy. So I've got, I've got those lined up here in my little windows. So my cut and work is very simplified, which I love. Cause see, normally if you didn't have that real thick Sharpie line in there, you'd have to spend a lot more time being super precise and make sure that your hand was very steady. So let the Sharpie do the work for you. Makes it a lot easier. You can even use a ruler to begin with. And uh, that will really, really help. And I definitely try to take advantage of that as much as possible. And one of the reasons why I don't use a Sharpie at my live shows, well, it cost me a fortune, but also, so it's not very cost effective. But the other reason why, and this is the helpful hint, you, um, 
a lot of people like to come back in and use them later in the painting, which is fine, also still lovely and a great thing to do. However, you do have to make sure that your paint is all completely dry because if you push a Sharpie even at, you know, just accidentally into some wet paint, it will immediately dull and ruin the Sharpie for life. So uh, you just wanna make sure that all your paint is completely cured and dry before you do any detail work with Sharpie over the top. We're gonna go ahead and start to do this cut and work here on the roof. So again, holding it more like a pencil. I'm gonna turn it a little bit more to the side here to fill this in. Light, gentle hand. Now here's another little trick here. I'm getting into kind of a, a, an area where I need to fine tune a little bit, steady hand. So I'm going to use my little pinky as a, like a, a kickstand on a bike. So it'll help stabilize my hand here, help rest it, keep it steady, and then I can work in this detail line here like that. That helps stabilize my hand. I've also seen some painters that do some really elaborate realism and if they're having to painstakingly do details in one area for a really long time, I've even seen them construct some pretty amazing braces that they can rest their hand on to help steady their hand too. So it's, there's some neat tricks out there. But acrylic paint is very fast drying, easy, quick and easy, so we don't do a lot of that kind of work, and I certainly don't. But So Pinky is our friend, our little kickstand to help stabilize our hand for small detail work. All right, so now I'm gonna come in with my red heart here. So I've got lots of red loaded up. And let's do my mama brush again. So I have a favorite, this one's my favorite. Right here, mama. All right, so red. Red is very transparent by nature, so we have to be kind of careful with it. So first coat, you are gonna to have to hold it more like a pencil. So you're gonna get that transparency because this just gives you that heavy hand. And so you're going to see it dig in there. You're gonna see brush strokes but that's okay, this is just my first coat. I just wanna make sure I get that cut and work done with the precision that I need, which is the only way to really do it is just to hold it here on the edge. With the edge, that line edge is facing the canvas. Now when I'm, now I'm gonna come in and hold the brush differently, more out to the side, gentle hand. And this helps give me that really nice coverage over the surface. Awesome. You're at home doing this, give yourself a pat on the back. It's awesome. Okay, so, okay, we got all this beautiful 
This is what I call color blocking. So we've done all this color blocking stage. Right now we've just filled in all these solid colors. So uh, this is a beautiful place to be. And then ideally you might want to give this some chance to, uh, some time to um, set up and dry a little bit. Uh, I'm going live so I'm going to push through and continue to paint on some areas that are still a little bit tacky and wet. So that's okay. Uh, that's, that's for me if you're Ideally, though, if you can give it a little bit more time, I would recommend that. All right, so I'm going to come in and do some clouds next. We're going to do that here in the sky. And it's going to be, these are really cool clouds. It's going to be amazing. They're going to be, they're going to have really fun little highlights all over the surface. Um, I think, let me show you kind of the final. See how those are really, those are really pretty different have some style and pizzazz to them. So if you like that kind of thing, we'll learn that trick. All right, so I'm going to come in with my big daddy brush. I want nice, big, fluffy clouds. And I'm going to start with white, white first. All right, so white paint here. And then I'm gonna just start to push these in a circle. So I'm gonna hold the brush like a pencil and then I'm going to push in a circle. And then push in a circle and keep doing that. Let me show you what I do see a lot of beginners do. They will, um, it's, it's really interesting working with a lot of beginners because you, I don't know, it's just fascinating. I love studying the initial connection that they make with the paint and maybe how they first try to do it, even just all the way down to holding the brush or so I, I just find it to be very fascinating, the whole process of connecting your brain with the process to make it easy. Anyway, I think it's cool. But so a lot of beginners will take the brush and they'll, they'll do this. Just turn, turn, turn. And they're like, it's not working. <laughs> so uh, if you're doing that, it's not going to work. So basically what you want to do is hold it in a stationary position, hold it steady, and then just push that one side and as you do see all those bristles are going to fan out it's going to make this circular pattern so that's and then of course if you're on dryer this is why i said if you could ideally wait give it some time to wait because see i'm digging into wet paint so it's i'm losing a lot of that opaque quality of the white so and if you were doing this over dry paint you'd have a really solid uh, white at this point see i'm gonna have to come back in and feather it in so which is about what, that's my next step here, is I'm gonna come back in with the white, and I'm gonna lightly feather this in over the top. And so holding it over to the side, parallel to the canvas, will help give me that light touch, and then it will help that white just rest on top of the surface. So I'm not, I'm not uh, scraping it off. So light touch here. Light touch here, fill it in. All right, that is a beautiful cloud. So, all right, let's do some more of those. Do one over here on this side. Do some more. And then just lightly feather it over the top. And then I'm going to do another one right in the center here. Cute little baby cloud. I'm going to lightly feather in here. And let's see, I want a little bit of one over here getting some better composition here, a little more balance.
Then maybe one more tiny one over here. All right, so we got some awesome little clouds happening. And if you wanted to, you could just put even more little baby ones all throughout there. That'd be kind of fun. I'm gonna go ahead and stop. <laughs> and then uh, add in my highlight colors. All right, so highlight colors. Still going to come in with my Big Daddy brush, but I do want to come in with a clean, dry brush at this point. So I'm gonna come in with, I, my favorite choices here are just like a vibrant red, which it'll softly go into that white and make a pink. And then I'll have some purple and then also some gold. So it's really pretty. Uh, so I'm gonna just barely dip the corner of my brush there into that red. And then I'm gonna push that up here on the top. And then I am definitely gonna to have to come back in, do some soft feathering because my paint Again, it's very wet still. It'll be easier, as I mentioned, if this were all dry underneath. Then I'm gonna come back in with just that pure white paint. I'm gonna get some of that here too. All right, so that while it's still wet, I wanna do that blending while it's still wet. So soft, gentle hand and just lightly feather into the paint here. And then we're going to do the same thing here, just a light feathering into that. Okay, isn't that pretty? I love that. I love that technique. Okay, so we're gonna come back in on this one. And I'm gonna a little bit of some gold this time. So a little bit of gold. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of red. Also, want some gold here. Let's do some there. And because it is wet, I'm going to have to be just very, very light. I'm going to come back in. It's very harsh over the top. It just, I know it looks a little strange right now. I'm going to come back in and feather that in. So right now, I'm just trying to get these little highlights in place where I want them. Let's do some red. Now I'm going to come in with some purple because I'm going to. Balance out, I had some purple on this side, so I'm gonna come in with some purple on this side. The other helpful hint here too is, before you really commit to that paint on your surface, make sure the color is on the top corner is also on the edge. Make sure it's matching the right side of the cloud so you don't mark up the middle of your cloud there. Because ideally we want this, we want these little highlights on the outer edges. And I'm gonna do a little bit of red here. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back in with this white and do some soft feathering over the top. So nice layer of paint on one flat side. Oh no, where are my glasses? Oh, it went away. Oh, I'll answer it later. Okay, uh, white paint. and softly feather this in. And I also do sometimes a little crosshatch feathering here in the center. Kind of looks like I'm making the letter X over and over again, so I'm gonna just kind of lightly crosshatch that. That's also a nice feathering technique in the center there. But I definitely wanna just do a light overlap here Lie overlap, wet to wet paint. And that'll create that soft blended look. So 
So white paint, soft light hand, slight overlap, softly blend. See, I'm not quite in position. I gotta get in position here. I gotta get like almost parallel to that canvas. And I have a lot of color on my brush now, so I'm gonna give it a quick wipe. I'm not gonna wash it out. But just quick wipe down, because I'm losing my bright white in the center of the cloud. So I'm gonna, again, just that was a real fast, easy way to handle that, just quick, easy wipe. Pick up more of that bright white, and then I'm gonna continue to feather this in through the center here. Nice thick layer of white paint over the top. Still softly feathering into those highlights. Right here. Okay, very nice. So we have these beautiful clouds, very ethereal, super lovely in our sky. And then what we're going to do now is I'm gonna come back in and show you some details that we can do over the surface here. So we want this um, distressed barnwood look happening over the top. So I'm going to come in with my Big Daddy brush and some charcoal gray. That's gonna be our next step. All right, so I wanna make sure my brush is nice and clean. And what else? Dry, 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 dry. Okay, so dry. We don't want any water runs because we're definitely coming in with that darker color, which would look kind of like a mascara run. All right, so we've got black and white. And see, I'm mixing up that dark charcoal color. So I'm gonna push back and forth here into the paint. And this is another important thing to check for, nice thin line edge, okay, right there. And then I definitely want my superhero glasses on for this. So, dun, dun, dun. all right, so now I'm going to come in and do my line work. So, I've already got my cheat lines here in place. So I'm just going to follow those. And to me, it's always easier to do a horizontal too. And I'm just going to lightly drag this across. And you don't have to do one solid line all the way across, it's just okay to do a, that sketch of a line. And then I'm also going to do some vertical lines. Again, make sure that is very thin on the edge there. Sometimes um, your bristles can get filled with paint or it could be a bad brush too, but they can get filled with paint and they'll spread out those bristles and uh, it'll just be a mess. It's, you just, it's almost impossible to get any kind of a thin line. So sometimes you do have to wash out your brush, dry it off, reload, firm pressure back and forth and that will give you that nice thin line like that. And then you can go ahead and fill in. Um, this is a much, I'm so used to doing 16 by 20. Let's switch gears to a little buddy brush because on this small of a shape, we need a smaller brush. So same technique, but let's use our little buddy and just push back and forth. This is a terrible little buddy brush. Boy, these have been used by hundreds of people, I can tell you. Okay. I'm having a hard time getting a thin line. Rinse this off. Okay, so let's see. Here we go. There we go. Nice thin line edge. And then I'm going to go ahead and start to do my little light sketches of lines here. And I'm intentional about not making all of them just go straight through. And just kind of lightly because this barn wood has been through it. It's got warped wood and 
all kinds of stuff. And then I'm gonna kind of go back over this with a little bit of white too. Because it's a little bit harsh at this level, a little too contrasty and harsh. So I'm gonna come back in, clean a brush, a little bit more white. Make sure I don't have any water, excess water on that. And then just do a few light strokes of that white in different areas, just kind of soften up, soften these up just a little bit here. Again, just kind of doing a, a same repeat of what we just did, but I'm just kind of lightly going over it with that white. Softens it up a little bit. So basically it's just a repeat of what we just did. Same stroke, but I'm just softening it up with one more white line over the top. And you definitely want, you know, you don't want to wait too long. Kind of keep it going while it's still wet. You know, you get that soft blended look with that white paint, to, you know, that wet paint to wet paint. Nice and easy there. And just a few more soft lines. That's about all I needed right there. All right. So we're looking good on this. Lots of those fun little lines coming through there. Next, we can do, I'm gonna show you a fun dot technique too. Uh, so I'm going to use one of the smaller brushes, either a little bit or a little buddy, and I'm gonna use, let's go with a little bit. This is the smallest brush that we've got, and I'm gonna use a fun little technique where I make little dots. So this is a great way to make polka dot pattern, and you can make it really big or really small. So I'm going to show you really small because we've got some smaller shapes in here. So I've got my little bit brush. I'm going to dip into that white paint and I'm just going to do some little dots right here in the corner. So again, I just dip into the white paint and then I press straight forward. Just go straight forward. So these are fun, and if you wanted to, you could actually polka dot the whole roof line. That would be fun too. You could even do polka dots around your heart. Um, actually, that, that's kind of fun. You know how they have those lights that, it look, it's almost gonna look like a light, so I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Uh, so we've got our big daddy brush. I want a bigger dot on this one. See how that looks? All right, so I'm going to press straight forward. And I'm going to go up. I'm going to have, I'm going to make sure it's symmetrical. So whatever I do on one side, I do on the other side. That's just an easy way to do it without having to think too much about it. So just to make sure you keep that symmetry going. Looks like I need one more in there, one in there. And then maybe one more here. That's pretty cute. All right, so that's an option. Okay, and then we have some lettering. All right, so let's talk about lettering a little bit here. Um, I like to do 
just big freehanded work up at the top. And I do think it's really important to uh, give yourself a lot of grace on lettering. I know a lot of people get uptight because they don't feel like their letters look just like computer fonts. Um, but keep in mind that the artwork that I feel is most precious to me is stuff that has that personal feeling to it. So if it's somebody's real hand, as distressed and weathered as yours may be, hey, that's trending right now. So you could just tell people, look, my my font is called, you know, the distressed weathered font or something. Uh, but it's it's a it's a fun look. It also personalizes it, makes it really just an awesome, awesome touch. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and do my lettering. All right, so here's another thing. Ideally, again, your canvas should be completely dry. So what you wanna do is um, with a pencil, you can write out whatever you wanna say. And uh, I always do something really positive, just a really you know nice reminder to keep me in a positive place. So um, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do love here. And now mine's wet, so pencil is pretty much just as much of a commitment as paint at this point. But I'm still gonna just, you know, show you what it looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do this big, you know, pencil line here. But see, if yours is still dry and you do it with pencil, then you could actually come back in and erase it too. So I'm gonna go ahead and, okay. So, I know it fits into the space and then gives me a lot of confidence. Also check for spelling, believe it or not. I have, I did that once at a show. The girl's like, can you write something for me? And I left out a letter and oh well, I, did, I fixed it, but it was, it was kind of sad. Uh, so yes, pencil allows you to check for spelling, make sure it's it fits, it's balanced, and you can rework it and erase, because if it's all dry, pencil just erases beautifully over the top of acrylic paint. Then I'm gonna come back in with my little bit brush here. And I definitely need my superhero glasses for this. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and follow my letters. And when I load up my little bit brush here, I'm gonna go ahead and twist into that paint. This helps give me a nice fine point. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just follow these along here. See, mine is wet, so again, I'm picking up some of that color, which is, you know, kind of a fun look. But yours is gonna look a little bit more just pure black. I'm getting this soft blended look because I'm picking up all these additional colors here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just do a little bit of some touch up here because I am losing my black in some of these areas. And you can always come back in and do that and do like a, a devil coat. All right, beautiful, I love it. Okay, and then also we need to make sure and remember to sign our masterpiece. And you can certainly do this with a Sharpie, so much easier if it's dry. Mine's not dry, so I'm gonna do it old school with paint and my little bit brush. So again, tiny little twists here. I kind of just twist it between my fingertips like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and sign. And I kind of have a tight little space, so I'm gonna have to do like first and last name on two different levels here. Cause I don't want to interrupt that barn space. And you can also do initials. That's kind of a fun way to do it too. Fast and easy. All right, so there's my beautiful little signature and we are done. Pretty exciting. Okay, so let's have a little recap. Uh, you can go to our website at tipsyartist.com, and there's a place there called Digital Downloads. You, if you, even if you go to buy tickets, it's still going to be there at the very bottom, but we actually have a page called Digital Downloads, so you can actually get these templates online. 
Again, it prints on any printer, prints out like this, and then we just, we do recommend cardstock, uh, so it's much easier to cut with scissors there. And then all the supplies and everything you need is in the description below. And then, um, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, and we do ask that you subscribe. Please subscribe to us. We're going to keep coming back. I finally decided on a time. So every Friday at noon, we will come back and paint with y'all live. It's going to be awesome. So I'll, I'll just keep doing a new one each, each week. And so it'll be great. We'll have so much fun together. And thank you so much for joining me. Y'all have a wonderful day. Happy Memorial. It's Memorial weekend. So yeah. Oh, and speaking of that, um, this is another inspiration. So we're doing this live here in June, but uh, Memorial Day. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. Y'all have a great day. See you next time. Bye. And now I have turned it off. This is the part I never know what I'm doing. Um, yeah. Bye. <laughs> All right. Now I got to figure out what I'm doing. Hmm. That doesn't do anything.